I'm Anna Ferguson. I'm also an oncology nurse. And I'm here to tell you that hope matters. The Hope Project was born the day a young patient's wife screamed into the phone. And we had only met them one time. But she was talking about our oncology center here. And she screamed. She really just wailed in the phone saying, you left us no hope. No hope. It was horrifying. And it, her words just burned my ears and kind of echoed in my head for the weeks that followed. Um, because it felt like a failure? Yeah, for sure. That was part of it. But also because I really didn't know what she meant. What had we done? What had we not done? What could we have done? He was a really young guy with a really terrible leukemia, and he was at the end of his life. So what does hope look like right then? What does hope mean? Slowly, the started to creep in that um, hope must mean something different than I thought. It must mean something more than I thought. And what if hope wasn't just linked to prognosis? So that really got us thinking, and more importantly, it got us asking our own patients, what are you hoping for? Next week, next month, today, what do you hope for? We started asking, and we heard what hope means to our patients. And this is what we heard. I hope to have breakfast with my kids. Coffee with my wife. I hope my team wins this weekend. I hope to wake up tomorrow, to feel well tomorrow. I hope for peace. I hope to eat well, to have long hair again, to play with my kids. I hope to be cured, to be well enough to take my Paris trip sit by the ocean, to walk to work. Hope matters. And hope, we learn from our patients, these accidental experts on hope management, is not about living longer, but is all about living better. And everyone's source of hope is different. And if I don't ask, I can't possibly know what lights your fire, what gets you out of bed in the morning, what keeps you coming back. I can't know if I haven't asked. And hope and sunflowers, what's not to like right there? Right? But please don't confuse hope and sunflowers with unicorns and rainbows, because we're not just talking about happy words and pretty pictures. It's not just optimism. It's not blind faith. We specifically chose the sunflower because it's an amazing example of a living creature that always finds its light. It twists and turns over the course of the day if it has to, but it always makes sure to find its source of light and turn towards it so that it can grow and thrive. Patients in the throes of struggle, which are my cancer patients, our cancer patients, they instinctively know this. And patients, our patients, described hope as a reservoir of strength, a sustaining force, a guide, a peace giver, a lifeline. A lifeline. Hope matters. Now, this is not just a story about cancer and oncology, so please don't miss this point. This is not about death and dying. This is about life, because hope is for the living. Not just the ill or the dying, not just the curable or the cured. Hope is for the living, which, as far as I can tell, is everyone in this room. So this may not be a story about cancer, but cancer helps all of us in a weird way interface with life and with death. Most of us know either personally or have read someone's cancer story that moved us or inspired us. You know, why is that? We, we, we hear the story, we hear that they, they struggled and they persevered and they overcame and then, and then they tell us their story. And somewhere in the telling of that story, they bring us, wait for it, oh. Right? We've all felt that. You hear someone's story, and you're moved and inspired, and it gives you hope in, in life, in humanity, in the resiliency of the human spirit, in that piece of yourself that connects to that person, the piece of yourself that thinks, there before the grace of God go I. That could be me. And if it was, 
but I live and thrive like that person does. As oncology providers, we get the privilege of seeing it up close, of watching pools of light form out of the darkest of situations, watching people rise again, dust themselves off time after time, choosing to return to life and living even when they don't have long to live. They give us hope every day. So last fall, we launched this HOPE project in the Oncology Center. And the HOPE project asks the question that if hope is so vital, if it is indeed a lifeline, like one patient explained, has described it, then where is it in our clinical care? How are we, as providers, addressing it? How are we, as providers, positively influencing our patients' experience with hope? And can we be better at it? So as part of the project, we made hope pins for distribution, for providers to give to providers. And it's now become this recognizable symbol in the center. Doctors give them to nurses, nurses give them to doctors, to social workers, to pharmacists. You see it kind of throughout the center. But more importantly, they were made to be given to patients and to families in the context of a really difficult conversation or in the context of a really joyous conversation or in the context of just having asked someone, what are you hoping for? Well, let's try to keep what you're hoping for at the center of the care that we're planning. They're meant to serve as a visual reminder to all of us. They're meant to be worn so that they are a visual reminder that we should ask about hope, that we should talk about hope, and a visual reminder that hope matters. We also had hope grand rounds. How cool is that? <laughs> you just take that one minute, hope grand rounds. It was amazing. These three young women with three incurable cancers, they came and they talked to us about the role that hope has played in their ability to manage their illness. And I'll tell you that they talked to us, but what they really did was taught us that day. They taught us that we're, when we as providers are able to openly and honestly discuss what it is they're hoping for, medically or otherwise, that when we open that door and start that conversation, that their quality of life goes up. That those are the conversations that serve as a compass, guiding the treatment team back to where they need to be, oriented towards what the patient is hoping for. These patients rocked our world a little that day. They lit a fire. They started a dialogue. They shifted our culture ever so slightly in the center to one where it's a little bit easier to talk about hope, where more people are talking about hope, and where people get, at the very least, that it matters. Now, while this idea may have been born in oncology, it, it truly is translatable to each of us. It's translatable to all of Johns Hopkins. Hope and the desire for it transcends age and gender and department and health status. Why not bring a little hope to your corner of the world, to your corner of the university? Ask someone what they're hoping for. Ask yourself while you're at it. Hope matters. Pass it on. And do you want the good news? The good news is I now get to be Oprah and that everyone gets a hope pin. You get a hope pin. We have them. We try to take two, take three, take one for yourself and pass it on. I've been doing this for a year, asking this question and, and having these pins in it. Every single, uh, it's just never wasted. When you get that little glimpse into someone else's soul when they're pondering that question that they're hoping for, I encourage you to do that. Hope matters. Please pass it on.